Hello and welcome to Finding God's Way. I wanted to talk to you about something that's very troubling in the world around about us today. There are lots and lots of people that have made the decision to not go back to church. And it's understandable we had a big scare for a while. We had the virus going around and the government even started telling people what to do and in Canada they were arresting people who wanted to gather for church and and stopping things from happening and all kinds of problems around the world not just in Canada or the United States for that matter lots of people were wanting to go to church and were told they couldn't some churches even made the decision themselves uh, local ordinances were put in place. Uh, like I said, the government interfered. And then just general fear itself took control. And a lot of people decided that they uh, would do better if they didn't go to church. And they started trying to figure out ways in which they could uh, still function as a church, so to speak, and be able to go to church or have church services, I should say. And then we come up with the novel idea, what about Facebook? Or, hey, we can record the service and put it on YouTube even. So we can have two avenues. We can have Facebook and we can have YouTube. And people can participate that way. But that seemed to fill a void that was missing, a way that the church could come together. And some, some congregations even had the ability to set up meeting-style uh, meetings on their computer using the internet where you could uh, see you know, multiple faces of different people at a different time you know so we might have 12 or 13 people even 24 people participating together that were able to see one another similar to uh, like zoom meetings and other things like that go to meeting and stuff uh, and that was their way of going around the isolation because of, of the uh, coronavirus uh, but that all that aside, it's understandable why some of that took place. And we did the best that we could at the time, but we're not under those conditions now. We're not working uh, as a nation or as a world wherein the, the virus is so prolific as it was. We can meet and go to church, yet there are some who are still adamant that they don't want to do that. They have become accustomed to Facebook church. Oh, I can get up and I can go turn on the Facebook and I don't have to get dressed. I can uh, sit there on the couch in my pajamas eating potato chips or whatever I want to do and watch the service. And it's the same thing. Uh, come on. Think about it for a moment. Is it really the same thing? You see, this is the problem. People are wanting to stay home and still claim that they're going to church, that they're participating in church services, even though they're sitting at home on their couch or sitting at the dining room table. They're not even gathering as a family. You might, you'll have different family members in different parts of the house on their phones or on their computer. Or you might actually have some who gather together in the living room and everybody's watching the television and watching church. Is that church? Really? Is that fulfilling the obligation we have to fulfill God's will? That's what it needs to be boiled down to. That's what we need to be thinking about. Is this what God wants the church to be? You have all kinds of internet churches in, in place. 
You even have churches that have been established on the principle of operating through the internet. You've got uh, church.tv. You've got uh, different names that .tv or .org or whatever dot you want to put behind it. And that is their actual worship. They are focused in their uh, conduction of their worship service strictly through the internet. There are churches where you go to the building and you walk around. There is no pre preacher there. They don't even have Bible class. You walk around in the auditorium area and you have TV monitors around the room with the preacher on them. He's off in another state or another country. And he's sending his lesson through the internet to this location or other ones that are monitoring it. Is that church really? I don't think so. That is certainly not the church that God intended for us to participate in. So when we get right down to the heart of the matter, are we, when we are sitting at home, looking at the TV or looking at our phone or our tablet, whatever electronic device we've got, and we're watching a church service or we're listening to singing, are we really having church? That's what it boils down to. And beloved, the answer is no. You are not worshiping God the way he intended for you to worship him. It would be like the high priests. That, or not the high priests, just priests in general during Old Testament time. Were they allowed to just wherever they were go through the motions to make a sacrifice for the people? Or did they have a specific place they were supposed to be at a specific time following specific rules? And the answer is yes, they did. Would God have accepted their worship had they done so elsewhere? What did we find about Nadab and Abihu? They were trying to do what God wanted as far as worshiping him, but they had allowed the fire to go out and they had strange fire. Did God tolerate that? No, he did not. And they died on the spot. And we read in the New Testament that these things were done as a type and shadow of things to come. These were for our learning and admonition. Beloved, what do we find? What do we find? We find that God is worshipped in the manner in which he commands his worship to be given. We cannot change God's rules to fit the moment. We must, if we are able, do what God has commanded us to do. We can't just get up Sunday morning and say, well, I want to go fishing today. Or I want to go to the golf course today. And I'm going to get dressed for that. <clears throat> and I'm going to give me a cup of coffee and I'm going to head out the door. I'll put the, tea, the worship service on my phone while I'm driving, and I'll listen to it. So I'm going to church and going golfing at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? No, it's not. And shame on people who do such a thing. That's making God second place. Love it. We need to have an understanding of what it is to go to church and why. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, first of all. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says very clearly, Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves, ourselves together, as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more, as you see the day approaching. What day? Of judgment day. Come together and encourage one another to come together. As you see, as time is going by and we're getting ever more closer to the day of judgment. We don't know when that day is going to be. But anyway, we know it's getting closer. Let's get everybody to come to church. 
Let's get everybody to worship together. Why? Why do you do that? Well, let's talk about that. You see, we come together as a body of Christ. There's only one body. We come together to edify one another, exhort one another, encourage one another, teach one another, and help one another, and pray for one another. Those are things you cannot do by yourself sitting at home or out on the river bank or the bank of the lake or on a boat or out the golf course on a, in a golf cart. You cannot do what God wants you to do doing what you want to do. Not hard to understand that, is it? Most certainly it isn't. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, starting with verse 11, says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. These are all positions within the body of Christ that help the body of Christ function as God has intended. We've got some that are elders. We've got some that are preachers, some that are teachers. Not hard to understand that. And he gave some to be apostles. Well, those are 12 of them, weren't they? So God assigned those jobs. Now listen, but listen carefully to what he says, what Paul says in verse 12. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. You are fulfilling these roles for the purpose of helping the body of Christ to grow and remain faithful to God. How much more clear can God make it? You can't do those things when you're not in church. <laughs> this is not hard to understand that, is it? You cannot be a teacher if you're not functioning in the body of Christ. You can't be a preacher. You can't be an evangelist. All these things that, that God has asked you to do, you can't do if you don't come together. You cannot edify the body of Christ when you're not being part of the body of Christ. Oh, you, some say, well, I am a member of the Lord's church, so I am a member of the body of Christ. Yeah, you are when you function in the body of Christ. If you don't come to church and you stay away, how can you be part of the body? The body is not separate pieces. The body comes together. It is the body. But look, look at verse 13 now. Listen. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or a complete man, unto the measure of the stature of fullness of Christ. He's telling you what happens when we come together. When we come together, we worship together, we help each other, we edify, we teach, we preach, we pray together, we do all these things as the body of Christ, and we're helping one another to become the complete man that God wants us to be. Till we come in what? To unity of the faith. Till we all understand together what God wants us to understand. Till we all are able to worship together in unity and purpose of mind. As Paul, and we're all speaking the same thing as Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Not hard to understand that. Look in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 as a matter of fact. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four. This is another thing we cannot do unless we are together. We cannot partake of the Lord's Supper in the manner in which God intended for it to be taken if we're not together. Look what he says in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and he had when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Was he talking to one person? No. Was he talking to all of his disciples? Yes. And what was his terminology? When you what? Come together. How much more clear can God make it? You don't do this by yourselves, guys. When you come together, you guys remember me. 
And what did they teach the church? The exact same thing. We find it in the book of Acts, don't we? They remain steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. In what? In breaking bread and gathering together. We know they were doing what the apostles taught them. They were doing what God and what the Lord had taught his disciples to do. Look in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 16. It says, the cup of blessing which we bless. Are you listening? Which we, plural, bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. Again, plural, we break. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are what? One bread. One body. For we are all partakers of that one bread. Again, the plurality, we. Beloved, you, you, you cannot remain apart from the body of Christ and still say you're part of it. You're not edifying your brother and sister in Christ. You're not praying for your brother and sister in Christ. You're not even singing together. Look at Ephesians 5.19. What does it say? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another. How can you do that riding a golf cart? How can you do that fishing, playing sports, going to sporting events, going shopping? Whatever your excuse might be, you're not able to do that. You see, beloved, there are things that we do as the body of Christ we have to do together. Number one, beloved, we don't go to heaven by ourselves. We help one another to go to heaven. What about those who are lost? How are we finding the lost? When we're sitting on our couch, how are we helping the lost to find the truth? Are we supposed to be in church? Hoping that that neighbor that we've invited will come and visit with us? What about the stranger driving through town that sees the church building, knows it's Sunday, and all of a sudden he's got the urge to stop by and and go to church and see what it's all about? Are we supposed to be there to teach the lost? Absolutely. We can't do that on our couch at home. We worship God together. We pray together. We sing together. We partake of the Lord's Supper together. We encourage one another. We help each other. We teach each other. And we sing together. We worship God together. Well, but we need to get back in church. We need to quit finding excuses and letting the devil mess with your mind and encourage you not to go to church. We need to be in church. We need to be worshiping God together. This internet thing is a nice tool and it can help in a lot of ways, but it is not a substitution for our responsibility to worship God according to his will. Let's think about these things. Let's get back into church. Let's draw closer together. Let's be the body of Christ we're supposed to be. Thank you for listening today. I hope I've encouraged you and I hope I've helped you to understand how important it is to be together as the body of Christ. Go to church. Get back to doing what God wants you to do. Demonstrate your love for your brothers and sisters in Christ and for the Lord by getting back into church. Until next time, you have a good day. Bye-bye. I want to see you, to see you.